Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar and today we're going to be talking about digestion and nutrition and my name is Dr. Todd Strong if you haven't heard of me before. I am a functional medicine practitioner located in Cookville, Tennessee and if you're wondering a little bit about functional medicine basically what it is is we look at the function of your body and pretty much how everything like the metabolics are working, your blood work, uh, amino acids, neurotransmitters, and a lot of different other markers that are more specific to common issues. Uh, not necessarily pathology. Our, our main goal is to prevent pathology, but basically what we do is we look at these markers so that we can prevent, you know, if you're having certain symptoms that we're going to discuss later on in this uh, presentation. But basically functional medicine is just try to get to the root cause of disease and figure out what's really going on rather than just giving you kind of a band-aid to cover up a symptom. So we really want to figure out what's going on at a deeper level. And then most of the time what we use is we use nutrition, herbals, and lifestyle factors to really make the biggest changes and to give you lifelong skills that you can use to kind of thrive and do what you need to do. Um, to live the life that you want to. So I am owner of the Strong Health Institute. And like I said, we're based out of Cookville, Tennessee. And so today, let's just go ahead and get started so I don't take up too much of your time. But today's lecture, what we're gonna cover is GI symptoms and the big five. What are GI warning signs? What causes these symptoms? A nutrition overview, pathogens in a case study, and how to heal. So core GI symptoms. So as you can kind of see, everything overlaps. So even though you just may have one or you may have several, all of them kind of come from the same place and that's what the research is showing us. So acid reflux, nausea, cramping, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. A lot of these are consequences of pathogens or poor dietary choices. And I just wrote a book about this and it's called The Elimination Diet. And it's the exact process that I use in my clinic to kind of help people find out what foods are working against them and what foods are working for them. And so in that book, we really talk about mostly how food allergies and intolerances are more common than ever and how those can be affecting you even though you may not think that they are. And we're going to dive into a little bit about why that's more common today than it, ha than it has ever been. So we use the Kalish method approach. And so what this looks like basically at its fundamentals is we do lab testing plus diet and lifestyle coaching, and that equals optimal health. And I've kind of come up with this little saying, and what I always tell my patients is when we focus on your health, your health issues go away, whether that's increased weight gain, whether that's fatigue, whether that's depression, anxiety, female hormones, um, just all of these really common occurrences that people struggle with tend to just go away once we kind of do the education process. And the health education, especially here in Tennessee, is kind of poor and a lot of people have thought one way for such a long time and we just see that people keep getting sicker and sicker especially as they age and they're not able to live the lifestyle that they want to live it's like you work all these years you get to retirement and then you can't enjoy retirement because your body's so broken down so what we do is we teach you how to take care of your body so that if you're 80 and you want to go cross country skiing you have the ability to because you feel so good so that's kind of the my philosophy and my principle for it is I want to give you the ability to live the best life that you can because if you think about how much time you're thinking about how tired you are, how much pain you're in, that eats up a lot of your time and that's our most valuable asset. So time, it's we can't make any more of it. Once it's gone, it's gone. And so just giving you the ability to enjoy the time that you have here is pretty much my goal. So. The big five. The big five that we see mostly are people complaining about weight gain, fatigue, depression, female hormone imbalances, and digestive issues. 
And so all of these can be correlated back to adrenals is one. And I have uh, a few adrenal lectures that I do and a patient education webinar as well, where I talk about kind of how everything ties together. If you're interested in that, uh, it's in the Facebook group, I believe, or it's on YouTube. You can find it. Just reach out. And I'll have more information at the end where you can reach me and contact me and we can get you those materials. But a lot of this occurs from adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue causes GI issues because if you're secreting so much cortisol, you rob your sex hormones to produce cortisol. And then also you rob your stomach lining of an amino acid called glutamine, which is essential to making a lot of processes, whether it's amino acids, neurotransmitters, basic energy, metabolic functions. And if you deplete that, then what happens is that leaves you more susceptible to bacteria, viruses, parasites, and an issue called leaky gut syndrome. And so a lot of people, a big question I have is why do I keep gaining weight even though maybe my diet is perfect or maybe uh, I'm eating at a calorie deficit because weight loss is a basically a simple mathematic formula. You have to eat less calories than you take in or you have to burn more calories than you take in. And so one of the issues is if people have disrupted cortisol patterns, then what we find is that cortisol will actually cause them to retain weight due to the high stress factor because they need that energy and that fuel and their body's like, I want to retain this fat so that I have something to handle the stress that I'm going through. And that's something that once we incorporate some lifestyle factors, some dietary changes, that people see a, a real... Um, kind of boost in their weight loss and their ability to lose weight and keep it off. And that's kind of the main goal because yo-yo dieting is pretty much just what every diet, and there's so many diets out there that it's really hard to kind of figure out which one is right for you. But basically it's just, you just need to eat good wholesome food and you need to support your cortisol rhythms. You need to support your body with the right amount of micronutrients uh, like vitamins and minerals to sustain health. And then fatigue is a big one that comes back to, to cortisol. Uh, a lot of that can be correlated to if you have aberrant sleep patterns, not getting enough sleep. Cortisol plays into a big part of that because cortisol is dictated um, a lot by your pituitary, which controls your circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycle. So if that is off, cortisol can throw that off and that can lead to a lot of issues just with like insomnia, waking up, feeling tired, um, and then just like feeling tired in the middle of the day. I know that that's a big one. So those are like common patterns that happen when you have increased cortisol. Uh, depression is a big one. Now, now this one's a little bit interesting because around 70% of your serotonin is made by your gut microbiome. And there are specific microbiome uh, bacteria that have a positive influence and some that have a negative influence. And this is actually a very big and upcoming field. And a lot of people are doing more research. And I know this sounds a little gross, but they're actually doing fecal transplants where you know, if you haven't seen Avengers, then don't worry about this, but there's Thor on there or Chris Himesworth. And basically what the research says is that if you took his fecal matter or his poop, I know a little gross, and you transplanted it into your gut, then you would have the same traits that Chris Himesworth would. Um, or let's say Brad Pitt, everybody knows Brad Pitt. If you took his fecal matter and transplanted it into your gut, then you would have the same char characteristics as Brad Pitt. Or let's say for women, I don't know who, Scarlett Johansson or somebody like that, the same principle applies. So it's really interesting how we can really determine your neurochemistry and your brain chemistry from your gut health. So a lot of people who are struggling with depression or anxiety, it's either they're, they've got such a messed up GI system that they're not able to produce the right amount of serotonin and they can't produce, and that's your feel good hormone. So that's one of those hormones that makes you feel happy and makes you feel enlightened and makes you feel like you can enjoy the world. So it, it's kind of telling us that if you're abusing your stomach, then you're abusing your happiness almost, if we can say that. 
And then you're wondering why people have to stay on uh, antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication or SSRIs. They're called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And basically what they do is they just prevent you from breaking down serotonin so that you have more. And why does this matter? Well, if you want to stay on medication for the rest of your life, that's not an issue whatsoever. But if you want to get off medication and you really want to find the root cause of the problem, most of the time we want to look at your gut health. Female hormone imbalances. Now, how, how this works out, if your gut's really stressed out, you're secreting a lot of cortisol, then basically what happens is you have the sex hormone pathways. There's a lot of precursors that go into testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen, but they also make cortisol. So if you're using pretty much all of your resources to make cortisol and you've got to rob Peter to pay Paul. So basically what you're doing is you're making cortisol and you're lacking in your sex hormones. And I see cases like this where women will actually lose their menstrual cycle if they're so stressed out because their cortisol levels are through the roof. And basically what happens is they lose the menstrual cycle because their body's saying, you, you are not healthy enough to support another living being right now. And so what, what we do is we basically just bring their cortisol levels down with herbals or uh, some nutritional changes, do some de-stressing activities, and then they should be able to gain their menstrual cycle back and become a lot healthier and gain that balance back into um, their normal cycle. And digestive issues is kind of an obvious one. So if you have heartburn, if you have nausea, if you have vomiting, if you have bloating, if you have gas, if you have constipation or diarrhea, pretty much where's it coming from? Probably your gut. Uh, probably either food you're eating, food intolerances or food allergies, or you have a really bad gut microbiome. So those are kind of the big five that we look at that a lot of people struggle with and that we work to kind of help you resolve these issues so that you can live a better life and don't have to worry about this. Now, so I probably should have went to this slide, but a breakdown in one or more of the three key body sim systems is the hormonal system, which is a breakdown from increased cortisol, which we talked about caused by emotional, dietary, inflammatory problems. So it's not just enough to address the dietary problems and it's not just enough to address the inflammatory problems and it's not just enough to address the emotional problems. You have to address all three. And basically emotional is I tell people to journal, meditate, go for a walk, make sure you plan time in your day that you're doing something good for you, right? Because you earned it. Dietary, that's if you're eating, you know, uh, foods that are fried, um, a lot of saturated fats. If you're eating, um, you know, a lot of high sugary foods, gluten, soy, dairy, corn, nightshades can be a problem. And they're not a problem for everybody. And that's why it makes it so difficult because I hear the, the question all the time. It's like, well, Johnny can eat ice cream every night and not have any issues. But if I eat ice cream, then I gain five pounds and I uh, super brain fog the next day and yeah it's true so the biochemical individuality is is a real thing and that's what makes it so complex because it's not just a one-size-fits-all treatment for everybody it's very specific and detailed for you and what your goals and what you want to achieve are and then the next the next one is the digestive system and this is the breakdown from food intolerance and the prevalence of intestinal pathogens so a lot of the times I've seen cases where people will have what's called dysbiosis. So if you take that, symbiosis is living together and benefiting one another. Dysbiosis is kind of the opposite. It's kind of like a parasite where it's robbing you of your vitamins, nutrients, and um, pretty much your um, calories so that your not being able to convert and utilize those as much as you would otherwise, right? It's kind of like feeding off of you. And so basically you just keep feeding and feeding this bacteria or this parasite and it's no benefit to you. So see that pretty often food intolerances are spiking. Uh, dairy is a very common one, gluten, 
you know, there are a lot of cases where depression, anxiety, people go on a gluten-free diet and they feel way better or brain fog. Sugar is a, is a major one. Soy, corn, and nightshades. Uh, why is corn, corn, everybody, everybody always asks that question because it's GMO mostly. Now, if you go to the Amish or you get organic corn, it's probably not as bad for you, but GMO corn in studies will bind what's called niacin, vitamin B3, and it'll actually prevent you from converting your um, your precursors into sex hormones. And so if you're eating a lot of corn, and what is that found in? It's found in everything, high fructose corn syrup, corn starch, uh, corn sugar, pretty much everything. So if you're eating a lot of those products, you're inhibiting a lot of your sex hormonal pathway production. And then detoxification systems. This is breakdown from exposure to environmental toxins. Since World War II, there have been 80,000 new chemicals released into just the environment. And there's uh, a study now is showing that when babies are born, they have 40 to 50 toxins or heavy metals or pesticides in their body just from the time they're born. And basically, this means that our detoxification organ systems, which are our liver and our skin, are being overburdened. And basically, we just need to support them uh, so that we don't develop these issues. So, you know, if you see people who have eczema or they have skin outbreaks, acne, most of the time it's due to that their liver is just so overburdened or they're eating bad food that it's causing that outbreak. All right, so the GI brain connection. So as you can see this, the brain impacts the gut, the gut impacts the brain, so you kind of get this endless cycle. And the brain impacts hormones, hormones impact the brain, toxins impact everything. So as you can see here, there's a very strong connection between the gut-brain axis. So basically what you're putting into your gut will affect your brain, which affects your thoughts, which affects your mood, which affects pretty much everything. Your, your productivity, your ability to get things done, being task-oriented, um, if you lose focus, if you have brain fog. So as you can see, there's really strong evidence in the research behind this. And, you know, it's been argued for a long time what the most important organ is. And, you know, in, in chiropractic, they say it's the spine. You know, a cardiologist will say it's the heart. A neurologist will say it's the brain. But basically what it boils down to is it, the gut is the most important organ. Because if you are unable to filter out toxins, bacteria, absorb vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, then basically you can't survive. And this is really important because it's pretty much your first contact with the outside world. So if you think about it, anything you put in your mouth coming from the outside going to the inside, it's got to clean it off. It's got to prevent any pathogens from attacking your body. It's got to break it down. It's got to give you the proteins, fats, carbs that you need. It's got to give you all the vitamins and minerals that you need. So it's a very... Uh, overburdened system, especially today, especially with like if you overeat or if you're eating inflammatory foods, this system becomes just kind of kind of wrecked, you know, uh, to say it basically. And so what we can see is that as we talked about earlier, that if you have uh, any gut dysfunction, then your serotonin, your feel good hormone will be affected. Now, if you have a dysbiotic gut, which just means bad bacteria, then what happens is those bacteria will rob you of vitamins and minerals and micronutrients such as those are long-term health. So basically you can live day to day off fats, carbs, and proteins, and that gives you day to day function, but micronutrients such as vitamins, vitamins and minerals give you long-term health. And if those gut microbiome are robbing you of those vitamins and minerals, that's when you start seeing people who gain weight because they're feeding that bacteria. They may be getting the overall calories, but they're not absorbing the vitamins and minerals that are essential to, to function, uh, to handle those stressful moments, to handle those hormonal patterns. And then from there, what we look at is that the that microbiome will essentially cause you to 
feel worse later on because you've got a chronic deficit now and that leads to thyroid disorders that leads to adrenal disorders sex hormone disorders because all of those vitamins and minerals are key to making all of those hormones that regulate pretty much every process in your body and i hope i explained that well if uh, you need some clarification on that then just let me know but that's basically how how the system works and how um, there are so many chronic diseases today and how we can prevent them essentially. So GI warning signs, if you see here, there's constipation, diarrhea, or alternating of these back and forth, gas or bloating, IBS, joint and muscle aches and pains, anemia, increase in allergies resulting from leaky gut. And I'll take a second to talk about leaky gut here in just a second. Chronic fatigue, immune dysfunction, or no symptoms whatsoever. So that's the tricky part. So sometimes people don't even have GI issues, but they'll have like brain fog or they'll have another almost neurological symptom. And if you go back and most of the time we do adrenal panels and they feel somewhat better, but there's no resolution, we'll go back and we'll run a GI panel on them and we'll actually find GI pathogens that are causing just chronic inflammation throughout their body. You see this a lot in people who have arthritic type symptoms like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, you'll see it in like autoimmune cases like Hashimoto's, um, hypothyroidism, any thyroid disease, you'll see it in um, multiple sclerosis, you'll see it in pretty much anything that's classified as autoimmune. And so that, that's kind of what makes it tricky and that's why we like to run that lab just on everybody and really check and make sure that we're cleaning out everything so that it doesn't continue to perpetually make them worse and worse as the years go on. Now leaky gut, what happens is you get so much inflammation in your stomach and let me see, so this is perfect. So you get so much inflammation in your stomach and these little brush villi is what they're called or microvilli, they are pretty much what line your small intestine. They're responsible for absorbing all your vitamins and minerals. And as you can see over here on the picture on the right, you have the intestinal crypt. And pretty much that's what uh, absorbs like all your vitamins and minerals. And then they get conducted throughout your body through the nerve, the, um, the venous system and the artery system, the blood system to get where they need to go. Now what happens is if you cause inflammation, it causes these intestinal glands or these crypts to open and you get leakage of bacteria or proteins or viruses, parasites, whatever it may be into your bloodstream now and that causes systemic inflammation. So people who have fibromyalgia type symptoms, the brain fog, the chronic fatigue, that's even weight gain. Even weight gain is um, can be due to just increased inflammation because water will go to where there's inflammation because it's trying to flush the system. So you may not even have a lot of fat on you. It may just be water weight from chronic inflammation that nobody's really told you, hey, maybe you're just really inflamed. We need to get down the inflammation and then all the weight will come off. So leaky gut is pretty much, it's very common. And what we do normally with that, we just put you on like a glutamine powder and we use some herbals um, to kind of seal up your gut and make sure that you're not getting those proteins leaking back in. Of course, we have to fix your adrenals first or the whole program just doesn't work whatsoever. So that's kind of why we have the stepwise fashion. But you can kind of see here how um, if we if we inflame the gut, how you can get leakage of those bacteria, viruses, proteins into your bloodstream. And that causes autoimmune because then it's your immune system's like, hey, why is this here? It shouldn't be here. It causes kind of a war within your body and causes the, the inflammation. So you can see advanced mal, malabsorption, the VLI just kind of become decreased as uh, you get more and more inflammation in the GI. A little bit more about leaky gut symptoms. So weight gain or inability to lose weight, joint pain, eczema, skin rashes or hives. If any of these sound like you, um, you know, it, you may have leaky gut syndrome. Then autoimmune illnesses, 
chronic fatigue, depression, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, abdominal pain, asthma, hay fever, airborne allergies, unstable blood sugar with the right diet, unable to heal adrenal glands, headaches, arthritis, sinus or nasal congestion, recurrent colds or flus. So when we look at this, basically it causes almost everything, right? And that's why in my Facebook group, I call it the root of disease because basically if we get this fixed, a lot of these issues can be resolved. Not a hundred percent of them, I, you know, there's never any guarantees, but in my experience in my clinic and with serving, you know, hundreds of patients, once we do this and they're on board and they stick with the program, a lot of these issues tend to go away and they tend to feel way better. So solving the leaky gut symptom and the leaky gut problem more so is really crucial to overall health and just having uh, a very high quality of life because basically you can avoid this, you can avoid chronic disease. So triggers associated with leaky gut, lifestyle factors including diet, stress, and sleep, toxic chemicals, poor exercise habits, and hormonal imbalance, all of which accelerate damage. So we work on coaching you through these. We give you a diet plan for the first month to kind of eliminate any food allergies or food triggers. And then we give you a diet afterwards to, to follow. And we have a cookbook as well that we provide you with so that you can use that to basically make the process a whole lot easier. And, you know, it's not that you can't ever enjoy food again. That's not the, the case. It's basically... What we do is we teach you how to think about, hey, what foods can I enjoy and feel good? You know, and a lot of it's responsibility too. So if you're going to have a bowl of ice cream, know that you're that's why you're going to feel bad the next day, right? And so it, it's not anything that it's like, oh, I can't ever have ice cream. I can't ever have these things again. It's basically what we need to do is decrease the inflammation in your body, teach you about why you feel the way that you do, and give you the tools to overcome that and take responsibility for that those actions. You know, eat healthy again for a little while, and then you can, we, we all splurge, we all do. So I don't want you to feel like that it's, you have to follow this regimented. It's just, we have to get the inflammation calmed down for a while and we have to get you back healthy because this didn't happen overnight. You know, it's been over years. So it takes a little while, but once we get back to a stable position, you're more educated and you know, knowledge is one thing. A lot of people say knowledge is power, but that's not true. Applied knowledge is more power. So giving you the ability to apply this knowledge and the support system to do that and you can join the facebook group if you want to uh, we have people you know engaging in there supporting each other and, and it's great so and i try to post in there as much that i can and you know that way it's like if you are having trouble then we can kind of pick you back up but i digress anyway and then also gluten and dairy sensitivities so we want to make sure that we identify these Food allergies, you know, it could be peanuts, it could be eggs, it could be shellfish, a lot of those. Sig A, Sig A pretty much is an immune barrier that lines any mucosal lining in your body. So from your nasal cavities all the way from your mouth all the way down to your anus. So basically, Sig A protects you from the outside environment. And that's why if you see that sig a on lab results or anything like that is off then you know that there's just constant influence from the uh, external environment pushing causing this inflammation causing these symptoms and then there's obviously infections or surgery as well the stages of leaky gut, so this starts with local GI symptoms and worsens over time as intestinal lining is destroyed. So that's very key, it's destroyed. So if you keep doing this, you're gonna destroy your intestinal, excuse me, intestinal lining. Initial onset is accompanied by food allergies. So 
like we talked about previously, the most common food allergies will cause the intestinal lining to be destroyed. And you, you wonder people who have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, uh, those are diseases where there's a lot of inflammation in the bowel or they actually have to go in and take out part of their bowel if this isn't what is going on. So progression is insidious. People ignore the initial onset. So your body's trying to tell you something. So if you have pain, if you have bloating, if you have brain fog, if you have any symptom, a symptom is a red alert. It's saying, hey, something is going on and I need your help to solve it what that's when you have to become very intuitive and like what did i eat 30 minutes ago before i had this brain fog or an hour ago or two hours ago or why did i wake up feeling fatigued or tired so it's more of an intuitive thing and kind of learning about your body and really appreciating your body and saying hey i'm going to take care of you because you're the only vehicle i have to transport me throughout this life and kind of allow me to do the things that i want to do so as time goes on, IgG, which is part of your immune system, reactions start. This causes autoimmune problems, headaches, and joint pain development. Sorry, that should have been development. Common autoimmune conditions associated with leaky gut is eczema, Hashimoto's, Crohn's, type 1 diabetes. These occur as an antigen antibody complexes that build up and the immune system attacks the self hence autoimmune. So now food allergies. Allergies lead to addiction and cravings. So food allergies are often delayed allergies that show up as inflammation in the intestine after long periods of exposure. So how allergies lead to addiction is they stimulate parts of your brain called the op opioid receptors in your brain. Same thing that kind of like dopamine and these other neurotransmitters activate. And it just tells you that you want more and more. And basically what it is, it's just a, a mechanism in the neurochemistry that becomes off and becomes inflamed. And that's what causes those, those um, opioid receptors in the brain to become stimulated. So then it's even though it's bad for you and you're having these issues such as sugar is a great example, right? Because that one is more addictive than cocaine and heroin than all of these other drugs. And you can see it because you see people over consuming sugar all the time. And there's an interesting fact, I'm gonna take a little side tension here, but we were programmed way before kind of we had the um, industrialized revolution before we were able to mass produce goods you know, when we were doing more hunting gathering. And there is no food in nature that is uh, naturally sweet that is acutely poisonous. And that's why we have a proclivity towards sweet foods. So this is really interesting. And what major companies do, like let's say Nabisco or uh, General Mills or somebody like that, what they do is they utilize that to market to you and to get you hooked on it, right? So this this is brilliant. You know, I hate it, but it's brilliant. Because what they do is they put a lot of sugar in their foods and then they get you addicted to their product and you're like, man, I'm jonesing for some sugar. Like I'm gonna go get some Oreos or I'm gonna go get some cookies or I'm gonna go get some ice cream or I'm gonna go get some Cheerios or something like that. You know, so basically they're affecting your psychology more than they are anything else. Um, there's there's tons of research behind marketing and strategy and all of this stuff and that's why they're so successful if you look at the success of those companies i mean just multi-billion dollar companies um, so that's basically how they utilize that to their advantage just fyi gluten uh, a lot of the times you'll see depression and anxiety go away when people get off gluten so intolerance leads to inability to absorb nutrients gluten is in wheat rye and barley gluten intolerance causes digestive problems and gluten if you look at it basically it's a protein and now if you go to europe they banned gmo resources um uh, several years ago, burnt all their GMO fields. Don't do it anymore. You can go to Paris. You can go to anywhere in Europe. You can eat bread, pasta, whatever, and you won't have any issues. None whatsoever. Okay. 
But here in America, we still have GMO foods uh, because Monsanto and all of those, if you've seen all the, the leukemia awareness and lawsuits, that's who basically that is. Um, they have like these GMO f foods that what they do is they cause like a stickier protein if you look at gl their gluten and it attaches to your gut lining and it basically just like robs it and it uh, sticks to the intestinal lining and doesn't allow the passage of vitamins and nutrients into your bloodstream. And gluten, this type of gluten, is also very prevalent in neurological issues. Uh, there is a, um, it's called GAD61, I believe. Uh, I'll have to look back at that. But there is a gluten marker that will actually attack the cerebellum and cause um, people to fall down. It'll cause people to become discoordinated. So your cerebellum does accuracy, balance, and coordination. So it'll actually cause those issues because it causes so much inflammation in that part of your brain that even people will get headaches from it. Sugar. So sugar and addiction. We talked about this just a second ago. Sugar is a drug the poor man's heroin, as powerful as Valium, alcohol, or marijuana. Food addiction is a chemical addiction, not just a behavioral problem. A chronic disease that will not go away. Compulsive eating runs in families. Environment is very strong in this. Uh, food is the most readily available drug. Obesity is a symptom, but is not the disease. The level of humiliation around this addiction is stronger than that with alcohol, okay? So I'll just kind of leave that for what it is. Chemistry of addiction, gluteomorphins or morphine-like compounds from the breakdown of gluten. These chemicals trigger a feel-good reaction in the brain and create addiction to the very food patients are sensitive to. This is why we often crave the foods to which we are most sensitive. So like discussed before, they act on those opioid receptors and it just drives your addiction. And that's basically it's whether it's uh, these big corporations, they understand this because they've done a lot of research about it, how they can basically increase their bottom dollar and this is it. So they're using neurochemistry to basically influence you to buy their product. Eating disorders. So anorexia, bulimia, and overeating are all the same disease of food dependence. Being an addict is not a moral problem. It is a chemical imbalance and an addictive disease. Before you can uncover the pain of maladaptive food behaviors, you will have to deal first with the physical and biochemical solution. So this is why we run labs in the um, in my clinic because we need to see what your neurochemistry looks like and we need to change it. Uh, we need to get you on the proper diet to change it as well. Of course, like the first week is always a struggle, but uh, you normally after that first week or two, people are like, I already feel better and I'm ready to go. And then basically from there, it's just boosting you back up to uh, the point where you're at optimal function because basically you don't know how good you could feel until you feel that good because you've probably felt so bad for so long that you just don't realize how bad you feel. Does that make sense? It's kind of like your new normal. So what we want to do is we want to look at these markers, these objective markers, rather than just kind of guessing. The thing I hate is like, it's like, oh, take this supplement. I heard it's good for you. And it's like, yeah, there are some supplements that I recommend on a general basis that I think are overall good for you, such as vitamin D, fish oil. I think everybody should take magnesium. I think everybody should take free form essential amino acids as well because they're just the building blocks for everything. So there are some general ones, but I don't think that you should just blindly do herbals or um, kind of like more complex or it's like, okay, should I just take like all these B vitamins? Should I take like all these multivitamins? I think you should really work with somebody to optimize that. That way it's like you can do what's best for you and not just kind of blindly throw darts. So food addiction from the work of Lyne Elliott Harding, definition of food addiction, Lyne Elliott Harding explains the definition of food addiction as a chemical dependency disease, not as a behavioral problem or a lack of self-control. The chemical properties of certain foods can cause irrational behavior and depression experienced during recovery, a prolonging of the disease of chemical addiction. 
Effects of food dependence. Adrenal stress is another result of food dependence. So if so there are three layers to your adrenal cortex and they how we remember them in medical school is salt, sugar, sex. So they control your blood pressure through sodium imbalances. Um, sugar, they control your blood sugar by, you know, um, causing gluconeogenesis, glycolysis, uh, all these other factors that kind of affect, are you utilizing fat? Uh, do we need to increase your blood sugar to get you through this stressful time so you have the energy to get through it, etc. And then the sex is your sex hormones. So food dependence can lead to a compromised immune system, uh, as we talked about before. So I don't think I've mentioned this fact, but around 80% of your immune system is located in your GI system. Why is that? Because it's your first exposure to the outside environment. So your immune system needs to be there to attack everything that's going on. So if you have a poor GI system, poor immune system. Digestive problems are a symptom of food dependence. Serotonin suppresses carbohydrate cravings. So low serotonin levels are associated with more carbohydrate cravings. So it's kind of like a one-two punch. If we have such a bad gut problem that we are not producing serotonin, we're gonna crave more carbs that essentially that's like your simple sugary carbs to try to drive that back up, but it just is actually a, a negative feedback, right? Where it's like it actually doesn't help the system, it makes it worse. If the digestive system is not getting nutrients to all other sy systems, then all physical, emotional, and mental functions are danger. Are in danger so basically this is why again we call it the root cause of disease because it can affect your physical if you have inflammation arthritis emotional depression anxiety mental functions that can be brain fog that could be not being able to focus ADD ADHD why willpower doesn't work follow the simple three-step cure diagnosis and treatment emotional support and spiritual recovery People tend to have negative opinions of fat people. It is assumed that fat people are lazy and undisciplined. In truth, a fat person may be an addict. Diet, dieting makes us sicker. Okay? So let me kind of explain this. So basically what we do is we got to figure out what's going on. we got to come up with a treatment for it to get you feeling better. You need emotional support, whether that's from my clinic working with us, um, finding, you know, doing meditation, journaling is what I oftentimes tell people to, uh, to do as well. And, you know, finding somebody that you can fight, confide in, you know, whether that's you just need to book a call with me. I do have some patients that just come and talk to me and, you know, I, I really enjoy just kind of helping work them. And I'm not a psychologist or a uh, psychotherapist by any means, but, you know, it's just kind of help guiding them and kind of like questioning them where they're going and what they're doing. And uh, I find that very rewarding that I can help somebody and spiritual recovery, just kind of finding out who you are, um, you know, meditation, whether it's just taking some time to really think about your life and where you're going or what you you're doing or what you believe in. Um, so I'll just kind of go on a little tangent here. I believe that, you know, uh, the God, God or the creator or whoever made us, uh, gave us their greatest gift, which is the gift of creation. You can pretty much create, anything that you want. So you have the ability to create the lifestyle that you want and it may not happen in one day, right? Because it took God in the Bible seven days to do it. But, you know, so I don't think you need to see it as like one day it's going to be done. It's a time, it takes time and it's a process. So that's just kind of a little tangent there. And if you're not religious or anything like that, you don't have to believe in it. But, you know, creation is kind of like the ultimate power that you have. Um, so this little comment here about people who are overweight, um, you know, it, is it their fault? Well, that's kind of what we need to discuss. And uh, no and yes, because un until you have the education, which I'm here to provide you with, then you don't know any better. You don't know that these foods are inflammatory, that you're having all these issues, that they're going to lead to chronic disease. But is it your fault that you maybe didn't go out and seek the truth? 
possibly, right? But now we've got you the education that you need to make those changes, and now all you have to do is apply the knowledge, right? So um, it, it's not your fault that you've kind of fell into this cycle, but you can come out of it. And I kind of have a personal story on my blog about when I was younger and I weighed about 200 pounds when I was 11, and how I overcame that. So if you want to check that out, you can. I'm going to do a video on it eventually, but that's for another time. So sugar and candida, candida yeast infection in your digestive system causes uncontrolled eating. Sugar takes nutrients out of your body. And when adrenal glands are assaulted by sugar, the immune system is compromised and the craving cycle continues. So that's a candida is a, a yeast and you know you'll see people have thrush a lot of people who have like recurrent vaginal infections people have prostate issues people who have overgrowth in their gut sometimes it's candida and uh, as you can see here uh, itchy or burning eyes fatigue mouth ulcers itchy skin and rashes genital itching bloating white coated tongue constipation or diarrhea and that's just at a glance that maybe you have a candida over overgrowth. And the great thing is that we can use simple herbals to, to get rid of it. Pathogens and toxins. So pathogens can cause problems because you can't heal your gut until all GI infections are eliminated. So when we look at this clinically, basically what we have to do is we have to get rid of the pathogens before we can heal the leaky gut, but you're still gonna have those symptoms. So we have to get rid of those pathogens because if we just repaired your leaky gut, but all those pathogens are there, then the likelihood of you relapsing back is very high. So environmental toxins impact you daily. So um, if you spend an hour in uh, traffic, it'll deplete your glutathione levels. Glutathione is your major antioxidant in your body. And it's basically part of the system in your liver that does all your detoxification. So. Both of these deplete brain chemicals that trigger overeating. So let's say you're spending an hour driving in traffic, um, you know, twice a day to work and then back home, then that can cause the stress issues that can cause uh, an impact on your uh, detoxification system system and then you've got a GI pathogen because you can't detoxify appropriately and then you start uh, overeating and then it just becomes this perpetual loop. Blastocystis hominis, Canada and stage three adrenal fatigue. So you can kind of see this as a case study and let's see, I can't see my cursor, but over here on the left, you can see the adrenal stress profile. You can see that their cortisol levels are depleted. So you can see that uh, I believe the yellow is the patients and they are just extremely exhausted. This is the third stage of adrenal fatigue and there's three stages. And basically it's just like they are out of juice. It's kind of like even though they have a Ferrari, they can't run it because they don't have any fuel. So this makes them more susceptible to bacteria, and bacteria, viruses and parasites. Now over here, you can come and see it with their stool culture is that uh, they've got a protea species isolated. They have blastocystis hominis, which is a very common uh, pathogen that you see in most people's stools and just causes uh, a plethora of health issues. And then you can see that they've got a light growth of candida species. And that's probably, these two are probably why they're experiencing the, the problems that they are. And most of the time when we clear these out and then we get the adrenals resolved, a lot these people feel way better and then they can go and live their life and have um, fun again, right? You can enjoy life. So the Kalish method, this is a peer-reviewed method that has um, been studied. There was thousands of thousands of patients that reviewed it and went through the process and it, they had a success rate of over 90 percent uh, by going through this of course it is a little bit longer program but it's a stepwise program that sh has justification how we need to heal and the steps that we need to do it because we can't heal your gut if you're stressed out and we can't just 
work on your detoxification system if you have leaky gut because that's just going to make you feel worse because then you have more toxins going into your system so we fix the adrenals we fix your gi and then we detox you so reducing the inflammation through diet and lifestyle changes strengthen sig a levels through the adrenal protocol and then kill bugs repair the gi tract so if you're interested in becoming a patient of the Strong Health Institute, you can read our fact sheet on the website. The website's right there, just stronghealthinstitute.com. You can join our Facebook group. It's called The Gut and Brain Health, The Root of Disease. And also reach out if with any questions that you have. You can email me personally at drstrong at stronghealthinstitute.com. And I hope you all enjoyed this webinar. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to, to do this for everybody and kind of get this information out there. My goal is to basically help as many people as I can. And education is kind of the foundation of that. And then I have several books that I have giving people the resources that they need to, to do this. Um, so I'm just trying to give you as many tools as you can. The Facebook group is great. Uh, I'm always producing more material in there to, to post. And then also, uh, if you just want to reach out to me personally, I'm more than happy to talk to you and help you figure it out. And my reason is I know what it's like as a, as a kid who's overweight, going through um, kind of like depression, the mental turmoil, just kind of that feeling, not feeling really great and overcoming that and i've been able to and you know not everybody i feel um is so lucky so if i can help moms if i can help you get educated and then that helps your kids that's kind of my main purpose and my why so um you know it's i was able to do that i was able to go from 200 pounds to 160 pounds put on some muscle be an athlete, go to college, achieve a doctorate, spend outside studies, probably over a thousand hours um, in neurology study, plus functional medicine study, diagnostics, lab interpretation, lifestyle coaching, nutrition. So, you know, it, it's definitely possible and there's no reason why um, your health has to hold you back. And that's the one thing that will give you the ability to do that. So. Okay, I'm renting, so I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.